Hey everyone, it's Zia Scaravall from ZK Research here with Will Townsend for more insights. And uh, welcome to episode two yeah. of What's New in, in uh, Cybersecurity. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a while since we talked, we've got a whole bunch of stuff happen. Uh, we're actually at IBM Tech Exchange right now. And uh, while there wasn't a, this is a very developer focused event, Will. Yeah. Uh, and while there wasn't a lot of security news, there were a couple I thought that had security implications, right? Sure. Uh, the first one, and I, I know you know HashiCorp quite well, yeah. uh, was um, uh, Project uh, Infograph, right? Yeah, well, there's Project Bob, and then there's yeah. Infograph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but, well, but uh, Infograph, was, I think, was built off Hashi. Right. And I thought both had some interesting implications. Let's start with Bob. Sure. Uh, a lot of people think it was named after Bob the Liberty, our friend, but uh, <laughs> may not have been. I think it was Bob the Builder. Right. But actually, I thought that was a pretty cool announcement because it takes this concept of using AI to code right. and really turns it into an agentic framework. Right. And so you can do a lot of cool things. Like generally when you develop, you know, security is kind of an afterthought. People are trying to left shift or shift left for, you know, for a while, but this actually seems to make it easier. Thoughts on uh, on uh, Bob here? No, I do. And, and so the demo on stage was quite compelling. You know, uh, during the demo, he was trying to like uh, basically publish an article went back to Project Bob to help sort of diagnose what was going on, realized the code fix, actually asked that agentic agent to implement the change, and then went back and it was all done. So yeah. quite impressive. You know, and the other thing that I find interesting as well, at least from the developer community, the time that I have spent with, uh, with developer folks is, typically security creates guardrails and limits and stifles creativity. So I think what was demonstrated today um, shows the power of leaning into agentic AI to sort of remove that friction. Yeah, well, and this is the big shift that I think you and I have both talked about where, uh, to your point, security gets in the way, yeah. stifles innovation, right. and that's why a lot of businesses hate it. Right? Right, they say it gets right. in the way. Yeah. Where this actually, uh, again, this whole concept of making security a business uh, accelerator, mm -hmm. actually Bob would do that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And uh, so Infograph is a uh, built in the Hashi Hashi Cloud platform. Right. Uh, I thought that was really cool. And so that is yep. a like a unified observability platform for all of your tools. What were your thoughts on that? Well, what what I like about it is just how intuitive it is and and how it it visualizes the connection and highlights choke points, gaps, and, and that sort of thing. Just just makes it more visual from my perspective. Yeah, and the example they gave, and again, so it's not, I don't want to make you think that Infograph is only security, right? There's right. a lot of developer implications, sure. observability. The example they gave, though, was a security use case where typically if you have a, uh, a CVE, a critical vulnerability, yeah. uh, there's a whole bunch of steps you have to take and emails you have to send to different teams mm -hmm. to track that vulnerability. It's very manual. Yes, typically. yes. And yeah. so with Infograph, you have that one view of your infrastructure and you can actually uh, map out that CVE to all of your infrastructure and make sure that it's all taken care of before you either turn the service back up or you know it's yeah. patched or yeah, yeah. before you, like the worst thing you do is notify a customer that your CV is patched and then of course have it not be, right? And then it fails, right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting too. And the, yeah. those are really the two big announcements here, I think. Uh, they had an open AI partnership as well. Yeah, um, which Anthropic, I thought was, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, but I thought from a security perspective, since that's what we're focused on, those yeah. were the two. Yeah, I agree, my yeah, friend. Yeah. I agree. Now, uh, you and I have been traveling the world, uh, you know, and uh, so I wanted to run something by, well, I uh, uh, I came back, I went to Z uh, Zscaler's Zenith live events in APJ. I went to Melbourne yeah. and uh, And then Japan. you were in Tokyo, right? Yeah, yeah. In, in Japan. And one of the interesting angles Zscaler brings to market is this whole concept of the cafe-like branch as for as a replacement for SD WAN, sure. And if you read the last Gartner SASE MQ, right. um, they got dinged a little bit on that. They're listed as a visionary, yeah. and the the slight against them is that they don't have like a uh, a traditional SD WAN offering. Right. And when I talked to the customers out there, there was a lot of big ones that have completely ditched their SD WAN in favor of moving to this yeah. cafe like model. And your your thoughts on that is a viable approach to networking. I, you know, I think it's a super viable approach. I mean, you know, flexibility is always good for customers. You know, I spent 30 years in product marketing and we always try to focus on integrating, you know, sort of that flexibility. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at SD-WAN, um, it's a very, very crowded market. 
um, you know, th there's a myriad of different options, you know, different vendors are, you know, have different capabilities here. And I, honestly, I like what Zscaler is doing. And like, I got to fault Gartner a little bit yeah. for, for not being more flexible in embracing what you and I are seeing as a growing trend within the enterprise. Yeah, there have to be other options. And actually, when I look at that SASE MQ, uh, I think they had Cato, Netscope, um, who else was there? Fortinet and, I sure. think, and one other vendor. And to me, Fortinet's got a, a great product because it's if you want a low cost right. kind of volume play, it does that well. Yeah. All the other offerings kind of look the same. They do. I right? mean, there's not a lot of differentiation yeah. there at all from my perspective. And, and really, there hasn't really been any real innovation in WAN for a long time. In fact, all yeah. SD WAN did was take your legacy WAN model, right. and put it on a cheaper device, and put it on cheaper yeah, connectivity. Exactly. Right? And disaggregated it, yeah. and you know, put more software-defined yeah. capabilities. But I think there. that whole concept of the uh, cafe-like model. Uh, I mean, if you're, let's say, a law firm and you've got 10 offices, each with a thousand people, right. you're probably going to stick with traditional WAN. True. Right. But for retailers or yeah. you know, um, warehousing type, like for most organizations, consulting firms, things like that, where you've just got a, a whole bunch of branch offices with a handful of people, right. it seems that's a perfect use case for it. I, so, I think yeah. so as well. And you know, that's been one of the challenges I think with traditional SD WAN is is morphing it and allowing it you know to to address some of the use cases yeah. like those cafe use cases that we were just talking about yeah so, yeah and then you were uh, at another event as well right i was so it was actually closer to home yeah. so you were halfway around the world yeah. um yeah. i was i was in austin and uh so i was at cell point navigate and for our viewers that don't know who cell point is they're an identity access management solution they're really focused on what's called iga which is identity governance and administration and that's 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 different than single sign-on and some of the things that you see from Okta and Ping and that sort of thing. So uh, the focus this year was obviously around Agentic. And what's really interesting when you look at their Atlas platform and what they've architected over the last three years, it lends itself really well to this this whole idea around the permissioning and the identity kind of management of orchestration agents and task agents and that sort of thing. And these are things that, that companies like Cisco have been trying to figure out. Um, I wrote about this, uh, you know, most recently. Uh, Cisco through its Outshift organization, its incubation um, part of the company, yeah. uh, basically launched agency and sent it to the Linux Foundation to get more support there. Um, but it's interesting. So, you know, I know Mark McLean, the CEO, I've known him for like over 10 years. And um, I really like what, what the company is doing to lean in to its, its architecture and really do something different than what it's done in the past. So, yeah, the identity space I find fascinating too because, uh, in fact, I was talking with Nathan Howe at Zscaler about this. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, how identity is going to change, right? Palo really paid up for CyberArk. Well, um, because Nikesh re recognizes that, you know, number one, I think that was a hole in their platform strategy, but number two, it's going to be such an important part yeah. of Agentic Frameworks, right? Yeah, well, so think about all the, in fact, he brought that up before the CyberArk acquisition at the RSA roundtable, Nikesh did, yeah. where we were talking about all these different agents that are going to be talking to each other, interacting with each other. Well, who owns, you know, who owns the the credentialing of those right, things. Right. And then when you add in all the, if you believe the word of Jensen, like I think a lot of people do, <laughs> he talks about the, the word next, of Jensen. Yeah, the next wave of AI being physical AI. Right. Well, that's a lot of uh, IoT type, T type devices and For autonomous sure. vehicles and things that are moving around your organization. Sensors yes, and whatnot, yeah. That then, then need to be credentialed, right? Right, And have some sort of identity. Yeah. And uh, so that that's an interesting plan. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of pure plays in the space. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really curious to see how that market plays out because I do think um, the, the Palo move was correct because I do think it has to be part of a broader framework. And sure. so I'm expecting you'll see Okta probably taking out and some of those other guys. Yeah. And then the alternative approach though is could I actually just apply a zero trust everywhere and right. try and embed identity into that? So we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. interesting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And the last piece of news, and uh, you and I both traveled when this happened, was Netscope finally yeah, big IPO'd. IPO'd. Yeah, right? after uh, a lot of rumors for a lot of years, they yeah. IPO'd. Um, the the IPO um, was, I'd say, a good IPO. I I wouldn't say they blew the 
blew it out of the water like Zscaler did on their opening day. Right. Um, they were supposed to open at 19, I think they opened at 23, yeah. ran up to 25, and the stock has settled around 22. Sure. Um, what surprises me though is the volumes on it are still pretty low. Yeah. Which, which uh, in the cyber world, you would think would have right. more. Um, and just well, it, and then the raise was was lower than what I would have expected. It was under a billion dollars, right? Yeah. It's like nine hundred million and change. Nine hundred so. million, and the valuation was uh, a little less than their last round of financing. Which is really interesting. It is. In fact, Scott Rainovich posted on my LinkedIn post that he typically doesn't like to see a down round, right? Like a down uh, or an IPO that's down from the last round that they had. So right. there are a few warnings there. I look. I think their product pretty good yeah um and i think um but i've talked to a couple of investors and i think if you're going to play the cyclic trend of cyber um you're probably going to put your money elsewhere right uh, zscaler palo are much bigger I mean, right Cloud, fire, yeah cloudflare yeah. as well yeah crowdstrike right yeah and so some of those are complementary like i know i was reading some of the analyst notes and they're confusing uh crowdstrike and netscope yeah. they're very complementary yeah, uh, yeah but the question is is netscope's product line differentiated enough and easy enough to understand to stand alone above all the other security options available to investors. Yeah, and I, I gotta say, Z, to that point, I don't see a ton of differentiation coming from Netscope. Yeah. So, I mean, there've been some key acquisitions, Infinia, that have that have added to their, their capabilities, but I'm, I'm not seeing a roadmap maturity that I, that I would like to see from a company that's in their position and as established as they have been for so long. Yeah. I mean, what are your, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think they, you know, they started as Casby vendor and then right. they added Swig. And so I think they've got all the core capabilities of SSE. They added SD-WAN to, to make them a, a, a SASE leader. In fact, we're talking about MQ. Right. Um, now the question is, what do they do from here? And so, right. uh, like you look at Zscaler's roadmap, they added the cellular capabilities. They've been doing a lot of adjacencies, right. even before that, the Equinet deal yeah. and what they're doing with branch. and. You and I, you know, I remember when, when they launched that at Zscaler, you and I were teasing Jay Chaudhary about, hey, you're, you're getting into the appliance yeah. business, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so the question comes, uh, I guess, uh, you know, look, when you IPO, you generally have a pretty good pipeline. Yeah. So they're, you know, when they announced their first quarter, I'm expecting it to be good just because it'd be weird to IPO and then not have a good right. first quarter, but right. it's going to come down here now. You know, can they can they execute consistently? Sure. And this it's a very crowded space. It is. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, um, you know, we'll see. I guess. And I yeah. I just think I'd like to know you know where they go from here. And like I said, Zscaler yeah. made some good bets. Right. Uh, I, in fact, I think this I whole identity play and IoT we talked about. Yeah. The Zscaler your cellular product. Oh is going to be huge for them. Right. And so and I, um, and I did a podcast yeah. actually with Nathan Howe and one of his colleagues as well a few months ago. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's the you know, their cellular solution is a game changer. It's not called ZSIM, but I'm forgetting what, what they're actually calling the solution yeah, yeah. now. It's been a few months. I think it's just Zscaler Cellular. Zscaler Cellular, it, yeah. It, it, or, or it might be Zscaler SIM or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But it's actually a pretty cool product. It is. Um, and so this is where I think um, Right now, if you look at the SSEMQ, almost every vendor has the same core set of capabilities. Zero Trust, Casby, right. Swig, you know, things like that. And the yeah. question is how you differentiate from here. Right. Zscanner is clearly heading down that, that path of going to telcos. Right. Let's see where Netscope goes. And that's what I haven't seen from them is yeah. some sort of roadmap that takes them to what this next revision of Netscope's going to be. Right. So, you know, right. like I said, good company, good products, but yeah. it's an awfully crowded market space. It is, it so, is. Yeah. Cool. So, anything else uh, you want to add in the world of cyber? Uh, no, other than um, I'm on the road this month, like every week of the month. And so yeah. um, I'll have to take my vitamins. And, yeah. Uh, we'll have to find the time between my travel and your travel to record. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what we'll do at the, uh, are you going to the Fortinet Analyst Summit? I actually I am. So okay, maybe so we, we, we will do that there. Yeah. Yeah. To do that, yeah. So. And that's a, they're an interesting one too, because they're, uh, of all the vendors that are coming up with platform plays, they've really managed to, you know, have a good hardware play as well. So, yeah. 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 So and hardware it's for, and it's 40 everything. It's 40 <laughs> everything. So, all right. Uh, I guess we'll see you next time at uh, yeah. some 40 event somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, from IBM Tech Exchange, I think the keynote was good. Was good. A lot of good developer oh, stuff yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. On behalf of Will Townsend for more. I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research. Thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time on What's New in Security, Episode 3.